In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of James. And I really did want to uh, set this one up because I do think it requires a little bit of context. So what's happening here is that James is rebuking the Christians that he's writing to, the, the 12 lost tribes of Israel. He is describing to them the reason that they are in no longer in God's favor. And basically what it all boils down to is pride that they unfortunately have given into their pride and into their own arrogance. And this is uh, really where he gives an example of it. It's not something that we would think of as big. It's not something that we, with, with human eyes, with an earthly standpoint, would look at and it's like, oh, that really is a big problem. They really shouldn't be doing that. He said one of the indications of their pride is that they will say, well, tomorrow we're going to do this. Instead of saying, if the Lord wills it, then we will do this. That seems like such a little thing to us. But the reason it's significant, the reason it's important, and the reason that James is emphasizing it is because it does what? It puts you in the driver's seat, not God. It's suggesting that you are in control of your own destiny, not God. And that's why he's saying what we should be saying is, if the Lord wills it. It wasn't so much about the expression itself, even though I think that was part of it. Primarily what James is speaking to is why is it that you aren't thinking of it in terms, your heart and your soul do not think about things in terms of, well, if God permits it, then we will do this. See, it's wrong worldview. Even somebody that's trying to do the right thing, even somebody that is trying to live a good Christian godly life is going to be led astray by their own pride if they don't think in terms of, well, if God allows me to do something, then I will do it. You see, it's, it's a tiny shift in worldview that makes a world of difference. And that's really what James is talking about here. And we start out in James 4, 16 and 17, right after this passage, where he says, But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to dispel here when it comes to misunderstandings of this passage. First of all, what God is not doing, he is not excusing the ignorant and holding them guiltless. To somebody that doesn't know the gospel, who doesn't know what the right thing to do is or hasn't been taught it, it's true that that person is not held to as high a standard, but it does not mean that their sins are not still going to separate them from God. It doesn't mean that not having a relationship with Jesus is still going to be enough to keep them out of the kingdom of heaven, because it is. That's what we're told in the scripture. What it is doing is emphasizing that God does expect more out of us. One thing that I was constantly frustrated with as a kid, because I have a younger brother, and he's not just a little younger than me, he's a lot younger than me. Eight years. Which really doesn't seem like that much now, but believe me, it was like an eternity when we were kids. I was a lot older than my little brother. And because of that, you know, I was a, a preteen when he was still a toddler. I mean, maybe a little above toddler, but you know what I'm saying, he's a little, little kid. And he would do something, and Dad and I would respond to it or react to it and basically do the same in kind, and Dad would get upset with me. And I would notice he would fuss at me a lot more than he would fuss at Levi. And that's something that, because I am a very fair-minded person and because I was a child at the time and didn't understand the difference, I was constantly frustrated by, and Dad was, and I, I realize he was right now, but Dad used to look back at me as like, Son, I expect more out of you. You're 14. 
or 15 or whatever age I was when I did something. It's like, he's a little kid. You're almost a man. I expect more out of you. Why was that fair? Because I was older, I was more mature, and I should have known better. Now, should my little brother have known better too? Yeah, he should have. But the point is, I for sure should have known better. And he excused a little bit more out of my younger brother because, well, in a lot of ways, he didn't know better. Or he, he didn't know, he had not been instructed as often as I had. That may be a good way to put it. See, my dad was still mad at my little brother. He was more mad at me. And that's how God is with us. Does sin still upset him when it's somebody that hasn't been taught better or doesn't know the Bible? Yeah, still upsets him. Still wrong. Still a separation between him and his child. But it's not as egregious as somebody who knows the Scripture, knows what the right thing to do is, and just flat does it anyway. The reason that's more egregious is because he knows that we know the right thing to do. And so it's not that the sin is worse. It's more like we've done a double sin. Because to somebody who doesn't believe in God and doesn't really understand why lying is commanded not to be done, they may lie and actually think they're doing the right thing. Is the lie still wrong? Yeah. But it's more wrong for a Christian to do it because not only is he lying, he's also defying God and knows he's doing it while he's doing it. That's the difference. And it actually goes back to something that, that we've been talking about today, because you can look at examples of this all throughout the Scripture. You can look at Jesus. He held the Pharisees to a higher standard than the people around them. Why? Because they were supposed to know better. They were supposed to be the arbiters of God's Word. They were supposed to be the protectors of the Torah and God's law. And they were failing miserably. And so, yeah, he was a little harsher on them. But he was doing so because he knew that they knew better. He knew that they knew they were screwing up. The other people, they maybe just didn't know. And so Jesus corrected them a little more gently. We see what happened with Paul at Athens. Paul even says in that sermon, at this time of ignorance, God looked the other way. But now that his son has come and the gospel is being preached, he's commanding all men everywhere to be baptized. You see, before the Gentiles were not held to the same standard as the Jews. Now we are because Jesus has come and the gospel is for all. Now that that standard has gone across all of humanity, God expects more out of us. Because now we're partakers in the law too. We're partakers in Abraham's seed. And so because of that, I think that's the reason, the primary reason why we did this whole story earlier and I was so disappointed in Chick-fil-A. As much as it bothers me that there's a rainbow whopper or that companies like Target have a gay pride month display, yeah, it bothers me. But the reason that this hacks me off so much with Chick-fil-A, even though they're, what they're doing isn't considered as bad on its surface as those companies is because they're supposed to know better. I'm not trying to put them on a pedestal or, or say that, because like I said, I expected them a few years down the road to do exactly this. I just didn't think it would happen this quickly. But the reason I'm disappointed in them is because I don't expect those other companies to act like a Christian organization. I do expect it out of Chick-fil-A, and that's the difference. But more importantly, I think that that acts as a sobering warning to all of us about the serious dangers of living in the world and living as the rest of the world. Just like Chick-fil-A caved in the face of enormous pressure, we can do the same thing as Christians, and often do. That's why it's so important to stand fast and hold on to that which is good. Because God expects more out of us. He expects more out of us because we have been given His Word, we've been given it abundantly, and because of that, especially as we mature in the faith, God expects us to be his messengers. He expects us to act better than those that are outside of his kingdom. Because if we act like everybody else in the world, then what was the point of building a kingdom anyway? We are cast out of the kingdom at that point because we really don't belong to his son. We belong to the world.
And that ought to be a terrifying thought to everybody in the kingdom. We have to hold fast to that which is good and denounce that which is evil. Because God expects that out of us. And when we do not meet God's expectations, there are always consequences. Stay the course, friends. Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.